There's something magnificent about the Arthurian legends, something magical about the Neolithic quoits and ancient stone circles, something comforting about a proximate pub with people and civilization of sorts. Even the mud on the moors reassuring, the sludge happy to hang around. Where she walked now, there were few signs of any human presence and the earth seemed to disappear quickly, as if the virgin rocks, so recently released from the earth, needed feeding to grow. We saw lights in the upper field last night. It was Edith. It was amazing how mention of the fields still put John on edge after all these years. We thought we should ring you straight away. I've got Mary here too. Well, if they'd seen it last night, they'd not really rung straight away. It was too late to ring, and of course we had the power cut. Edith continued as if answering his thoughts. But to be honest, we've hardly slept. We decided we should take a quick look when dawn arrived. Beautiful across the estuary this morning, by the way. Anyway, it looks like there's been a bit of a landslide, and that the you-know-what might have reappeared. I'm Rowan, she said. I'm Ash. The smile vanished, but only because she was studying him. Her eyes still sparkled as they roamed his face. Ash, she said. Yes, of course you are. It's short for Ashley. Ash is fine, she said softly. Just fine. And fancy you having the name of a tree too. Yes, she said. Just fancy that. So, you paint? asked Ash. Yeah, when I can. Great. What do you paint? The ovens are on as hot as they can go and he's thinking of the coolness of the sea. Names! Bliss calls through from the kitchen. What are we going to call these pizzas, dude? Steve spins the dough on his fingers, stretching lightly until it's a circle as wide and round as this island. It feels like his own private beach. Tonight, it'll be all his while everyone else on the island is sleeping. Perhaps he'll even sleep there, curled in the lee of a rock, waiting for seals to fall out and sing at dawn. Perhaps. No, Mother says, screwing her nose up and aiming her scowl at me. It's blinding me. I nudge her wheelchair out of the glare. And turn that racket off. She's lunging at my radio. I reach to lower the volume and knock a framed photograph off the shelf. It's not intentional, but it's no accident either. Clumsy, she moans. The frame holds a grainy snap taken of my mother as a child. She's smiling and sitting cross-legged under an apple tree growing in the garden of a small, neat cottage. Hazy images appear inside my head. I close my eyes. I have pigtails. I'm the same age as mother in the photograph. I'm pushing open a gate. I'm sprinting up a path towards that same tree. And now the memory flows. She told me about her child at home. We'd driven up the coast. She was singing along to the radio. It's a proper treat, she'd said about the trip. You'll love it. Tree's got the reddest apples. <laughs>